With the most controversial World Cup in the history of football starting in just a few days, there are a lot of stories to be told from all the headlines and stories which have been reported recently. From squad announcements and player injuries to World Cup ambassadors and their questionable views and human rights insulting statements, there has been a lot of talk about the Winter Qatar World Cup already. But now, days before the first kickoff, people have a different story to talk about. It's Cristiano Ronaldo who has moved the attention away from the World Cup and put it to his stained relationship with his current club, Manchester United. The GOAT's interview with Piers Morgan has gotten the whole footballing world interested in all the flaws and problems which have been going on in Manchester United lately. Not only regarding Ronaldo and his future at the club, but also their board, staff and general approach to being one of the best and most desirable teams to play for nowadays. Ronaldo calls out all the issues with the management and shows his frustrations with the club, its owners and their current head coach, Eric Ten Hag. They're trying to force you out. Yes, not only the coach, but the other two or three guys there around the club. At uh, the senior executive level? Yes, that I felt betrayed. And uh, you think they're trying to get rid of you? Honestly, I should not say that, I don't know, but listen, I, I don't care. I'm always, people should listen to the truth. Yes, I feel betrayed and I felt that some people that don't want me here, not only this year, but last year too. I don't know what's going on, but since, since the, um, Sir Alex Ferguson left, I saw no evolution in the club. The progress was zero. For example, we have an interesting point that how the club as Manchester United after suck um, Ole, mm. they buy, they bring sport directive Ralph Regnick, which is something that nobody understands. This guy is, is not even a coach. A bigger club like Manchester United bring sport directive, surprise not only me, but all the world, you know, nothing changed. Surprisingly, not only the pool, the jacuzzi, even the gym, even some points in technology, the kitchen, the chefs, which is I appreciate, lovely, lovely persons, they stop in a, in a time which is, is, it surprised me a lot. I thought I will see different things, different, as I mentioned before, technology, infrastructure. But unfortunately, we see many things that I'm used to see when I was 20, 21, 23. So surprised me a lot. The owners of the club, they listen, they don't. The glazers. The glazers. They don't. They don't care about about the club. I mean, professional uh, sport. As you know, this Manchester is a marketing club. They will get his money from the marketing. The sports. It's they. They don't really care, in my opinion. Do you ever talk to them, the glazers? Never. 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 Not since you've gone back. No. They give all the power to the president, the sport directive. A lot of Manchester United fans are very negative about the Glazers. They think they're taking all the money out and not spending enough on players, on the infrastructure issues you talked about. Do you think the fans are right? The fans are they're always right. I think the fans should know the truth, should know that the players, we want the best for the club. I want the best of the club. This is why I'm coming to Manchester United. This is why I love this club. But you have some things inside the club which is don't help to Manchester reach the top level as City, Liverpool and even now Arsenal, for example, which is, is complicated. It's difficult. Um, it's hard. In my opinion, it will be hard for Manchester to be in the top of the game the next two, three years. People can have, can have his own opinion, but they don't really know what's going on. For example, inside the, the, the training ground and Carrington area or even my life, they should listen not only one point of view, they have to listen my point of view as well. Because it's easy to, to criticize, but if you don't know the old story, it's, it's, it's easy, you know. It's easy, it's easy to criticize. I don't know if you have a job in television that they must criticize to, a, 
to be more famous. I really don't understand. Do you think they use your name a bit to get attention? I think they take advantage of that because they are not stupid. And I really understand and I have to carry on with my life with criticize, criticize or, or when the people speak good about you. But it's hard when you see people who was in the dressing room with you criticizing that way. It must hurt It's not you. good. Yeah. Yes, I did. But not hurt I, I, I'm not going to be more slim. I'm not going to sleep bad because of the criticize. But it's not good to listen to that. As you can hear, Cristiano Ronaldo feels not only betrayed, but also not valued enough by the club which he decided to come back to in order to help them reach their old glory days together again. Nobody can say anything against this man's work ethic and dedication to the beautiful game of football. Nobody can criticize and disregard his fighting spirit and never-ending hunger for trophies and success. So, if one of the best two footballers of our generation speaks up and tells us all about the issues that he has been dealing with and facing during his return to his old club, the world should better listen. Glazers out hasn't been a chant and wish from Man United fans for no reason in the past few seasons after all. They obviously only care about making a profit and only see Manchester United as a profit-making business and not as the historic and successful football club that it once was and always should be, which is exactly where all of these issues and problems start. As you were able to hear in parts of the interview, Cristiano calls out some of the issues he has been dealing with ever since returning to Manchester. Last season already, he has felt how he wasn't appreciated enough and how some of the higher-ups not only didn't value, but also didn't want him and his winner mindset and attitude back at the club. But despite that, Cristiano proved the world his class and importance for the club in last season's 21-22 campaign, scoring 24 goals and assisting another 3 in 38 appearances for the Red Devils across all competitions. Despite United struggling and fighting through lots of issues, Cristiano pushed his team and the club to give their all and make the most out of a horrendous season. From the sacking of coach Ole Gunnar Solskjaer to the appointment of sporting director Ralf Ragnick as new head coach, a few questionable decisions had been made in that season by United's board, as Ronaldo pointed out in his recent interview. But the Portuguese striker kept going, despite all the issues and controversy and gave it his best in order to reach a Champions League spot with United, which they've unfortunately ended up missing out on. As a result of not qualifying for the Champions League, the tournament Ronaldo has been most dominant in, Cristiano realized that staying in Manchester wouldn't help neither him nor the club anymore. The lack of desire, fighting spirit and passion at the club annoyed the Portuguese and only pushed his desire to leave the club. Thereby, Ronaldo and his agent openly talked about leaving the club and looked for a transfer elsewhere during the summer transfer window. As FC Chelsea emerged as favourites to sign the striker, United's board pushed for Ten Hag to make statements of Cristiano being in his plans and Ronaldo being a key player for his playstyle, with the main reasons being financial business ones, since they didn't want to lose out on the big profits that come with marketing and merchandising Ronaldo as their player. This brings us to the current season, 2022-2023. With about half of the season having already been played, Cristiano Ronaldo has seen nothing but disrespect and lack of appreciation for Manchester United, their board and their coach Ten Hag. In total, Ronaldo has only played in 16 games this season in which he scored 3 goals and assisted 2. Ronaldo has only been featured in 1051 minutes for United, with most of his appearances coming from the bench, which is an unacceptable treatment for arguably one of the best players this game has ever seen, especially when thinking back to his performances and goals last season. Cristiano was one of the few performing players in United's otherwise inconsistent and poorly performing squad. Despite that, the new coach never seemed to even want him in his squad, let alone count on Cristiano as a key player this season. Ten Hag showed Ronaldo nothing but disrespect and never appreciated his work ethic and what he brings to the team in scoring and presence on the pitch. This combined with benching Ronaldo while only giving him a secondary role in the squad led to several frustrations and outbursts from Ronaldo during the season. From leaving a game against Tottenham a few minutes before the final whistle was blown after being sent to warm up for the game in the 52nd minute, to him not being featured in games at all or getting barely 20 minutes of game time, 
Cristiano has seen it all and has had enough of the disrespect from the Dutch coach. Thereby, he went on to give a controversial interview with Piers Morgan where he decided that it was time for him to speak up and talk about all the issues and problems which he had been dealing with ever since returning to Manchester. The consequences of the interview are clear to everyone. Cristiano Ronaldo's return to Manchester United has for sure come to an end now. I don't see a way or solution in which Manu decide to keep CR7 after all the things he has said in his interview with Piers Morgan. From criticizing the club owners, the infrastructure, the lack of passion and desire to win, to saying that he does not respect Eric Ten Hag at all. Ronaldo has had enough, and rightfully so. He came back to a club which he loved and with which he reached his first highs as a professional. He came back to the Premier League and chose Manchester United over Manchester City thanks to the convincing words of his old coach, mentor and now friend Sir Alex Ferguson. Ronaldo came back to England, ready to spark competitive fire and push Manu back to its old glory days. But what he found was anything but professional or competitive. He returned to a club which didn't take a single step forward. He returned to a club which seemingly lost its competitive drive and the fighting spirit to do all it takes in order to win and be the best. The football heritage, as Jose Mourinho once called it in an interview, has been completely lost and hasn't adapted or progressed at all in United's last 10 years as a professional football club. And Ronaldo has had enough of this club, which claims to be one of the biggest and best in the world, yet only lives and thrives on its past success and victories. But now that Cristiano has opened up about all the issues and problems which he has been having with United in the past two years, even saying out loud how he has felt that neither the coach nor the board really appreciated and wanted him around, it's time for him to finally get the move away from United, which he had been pushing for in the summer transfer window already. Back then, Manchester's board rejected and blocked his move away from the club, claiming how he is a valued and set asset for the team, when in reality Ronaldo was only planned as a bench warmer under the tactics of their new head coach Eric Ten Hag. The only real reason why the club's greedy owners didn't want to talk about selling Ronaldo is because they were aware of his brand and name which he brings with his GOAT status as a football player. So, in the end, it was all only about the money, not about the progress or team development. Now, after the World Cup, Manchester United for sure won't be holding on to Ronaldo anymore, nor will they block his move away from the club again. Besides fining him for the interview, which seemingly damaged their reputation and took away a lot of their credibility as one of the world's biggest football clubs, Man U hasn't released any statements or made any official comments about Ronaldo yet. For now, the only question which is left to be decided after the World Cup is the following one. Which team will the GOAT end up signing for? Some rumors and speculations are calling out FC Bayern Munich and FC Chelsea as the favorites to sign the superstar after the World Cup. But a lot of things can still change and people all around the world are watching and waiting for Ronaldo's performance during the World Cup. While lifting the World Cup with his home country Portugal always had been one of his biggest goals and dreams as a professional footballer, now more than ever, Cristiano Ronaldo wants to go out and win it all this tournament. In this year's World Cup in Qatar, Portugal has been put in Group H alongside Ghana, Uruguay and South Korea. While it might seem like an easier group, it most definitely isn't one that should be underestimated and overlooked, especially with Uruguay being a potential dark horse of the tournament and hidden favorite to win it all or at least make a deep run in the tournament. But that I will discuss in a future video during the World Cup campaign, as I am planning on releasing quite a lot of World Cup related content during the tournament. So, if you haven't yet, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel, so you don't miss out on lots of good content on my channel. To come back to the topic at hand again, CR7 for sure wants to go out and lift the World Cup in Qatar, while also proving his haters wrong and showing Manchester United that not featuring and playing him in more games had been a fatal mistake this season. This tournament is also Ronaldo's shot at proving his future team that he still is, despite being 37 years of age, one of the coldest and deadliest strikers on the planet and that he will be an insane upgrade to every team lacking a top striker currently. 
It has been already rumored that it might even be his last World Cup altogether. So now, more than ever, Cristiano has a lot of pressure on his back. But that isn't anything new for him. So I am sure that Ronaldo will flourish and prove the world and his critics once more why he is one of the greatest of all time. After all, there is a reason why he, alongside Lionel Messi, is the best player to have ever played this beautiful game. So I have no doubts that Ronaldo will only come back stronger and better from the World Cup and that he will then dominate with his new club, thereby proving that United made a big mistake in disrespecting and underappreciating him and everything he brings to the table.